Mate, are you pinching yourself again? Yes, I am. Why are you doing that? To see if I'm dreaming. Because AMD made my dreams come true. Here is Zen 2, and you guys have been waiting for this one just like me for a very long time. And AMD has delivered with something that is so phenomenal because it hits on pretty much all four fronts that you would want to hit if you're an enthusiast. For instance, the first hit is the IPC improvement. AMD promised us 15%. From my calculations here, at least comparing it to the previous Ryzen 2000 chips, we're looking at about a 13% raw IPC increase. This also puts it above that of Intel, making AMD the IPC king now in enthusiast tech. The second front that they've hit hard on is also the power efficiency. Going to seven nanometer has had some big improvements with the new Zen 2 chips also being the power efficiency king in the desktop scene. The third front AMD has also hit for enthusiasts is better clock speeds. On average with the Ryzen 7 3700X and also the Ryzen 9 3900X here, I managed to get 4.3 gigahertz on all cores on both CPUs. Now I did manage to start running a benchmark at 4.4 gigahertz, however the CPU did top out. And from what I've spoken with with other reviewers behind the scenes and also speaking directly to ASUS where they've sampled a lot of Ryzen Zen 2 chips, the norm is about 4.3 gigahertz on all cores. So that means we've got a boost in clock speeds, a boost in IPC, and also power efficiency. Then the fourth front AMD have also hit hard on is new features, in particular PCIe Gen 4. When I tested this with the included NVMe drive, the two gigabyte Aorus M.2, the scores were phenomenal with the read speeds and write speeds with practically no dips whatsoever. This means that if you need PCIe Gen 4 speeds, whether you're an 8K video editor, or if you're just an enthusiast that wants the quickest load times possible, then this is going to deliver as well. Though with that aside, let's run the benchmarks for you guys and show who the new king is in town, and that is AMD, where I'm comparing this CPU against an overclocked 9900K, as well as an i5-9400F, and also the previous generation Ryzen 7 2700X and Ryzen 5 2600, both clocked to 4.2 gigahertz. Now the test bench that I had here, we also had two eight gigabyte sticks of CL16 3600 megahertz memory, which I used across all test systems and all chips. I also used a 360 millimeter water cooler for the AMD chips. Whilst for the test bed, I used the X570 Aorus Master, as well as cross-checking that with the X570 Taichi from ASRock. And then on the Intel side, we use the Phantom Gaming X Z390, and we use the same memory, as well as using the H115i RGB Platinum Cooler. And then for the graphics card, we're using the RTX 2080 Ti from Aorus to weed out any CPU differences. So strap on in and let's roll those benchmarks. So there's the benchmarks all done, but we're gonna focus on the gaming numbers first and talk about those where I tested at 1080p high settings or ultra settings depending on the game across six titles that I considered very CPU dependent 
especially coupled with a 2080 Ti. First of all, we'll pull up CSGO, which is a very raw latency dependent game. And we can see here that the Ryzen 7 3700X, as well as the Ryzen 9 3900X, pulls comfortably ahead of the previous generation Ryzen chips, as well as competing head to head with the Intel chip, the 9900K at five gigahertz. This is pretty much the max my 9900K will go. And I'll quickly pull up the power consumption results for you guys, which really shows how much more efficient the Ryzen chips are when you overclock them and even out of the box with the Precision Boost Overdrive 2. Now, speaking of Precision Boost Overdrive 2, it is enabled on the X570 boards by default. I tested an X370 board here where it was actually disabled, but that being said, it's so easy to just go into the BIOS, lock in an all core 4.1 gigahertz overclock, and then use that with a Wraith Spire cooler, bringing so much value for money out of the 3700X which will then get similar results to the results I've shown here. But for what it's worth, the results you're seeing here in today's video is what you can expect if you go out and get an X570 board and couple it with the new Ryzen 3000 chips. The Precision Boost Overdrive 2 quite simply works phenomenally well. Pulling up some of the other gaming benchmarks, for instance, GTA 5, show that it's coming so close to the Intel chips. However, the 9900K in this instance was breaking the game engine. So those 1% 0.1% lows is due to the fact that the 9900K is still pulling ahead by a little bit and it gets to that threshold. I believe it's around 170 average FPS where it then starts breaking the engine. But now moving on with Dota 2, we can see that the 3700X is really a shining star for the gaming benchmarks where it's pulling ahead of the previous generation chips and also with that PBO2 enabled, it's pretty much staying at the same level as the 3900X. And in fact, the all core clock 4.3 gigahertz, you'll see in some of these gaming benchmarks did trade blows with the out of the box PBO2 settings, which makes PBO2 an awesome thing for people who just wanna go out, get an X570 board, get these new chips, and then couple it with a water cooler or even the Wraith Spire cooler, where that did a really good job of handling the CPU too. But next up here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the 9900K did still come ahead by a little bit, but we can see with the Ryzen 7 3700X yet again, it's pulling well above that of the previous generation Ryzen 2000 chips. So it's doing a great job of delivering really good gaming benchmarks. The 3900X, as you can see, is still trading blows with the 3700X, but we'll get onto the productivity numbers in a second, where you can see that that's where that specialty of that 12 core chip pulls ahead. Where the next numbers we've got here is Far Cry New Dawn, where this did show the biggest difference between these CPUs, but the Ryzen 3000 chips are still performing phenomenally well, given that the 9900K does have a significant boost in clock speeds. The last title we've got for you guys is Tom Clancy's The Division 2, where the Ryzen chips were doing the best they've ever done in these multi-core CPU dependent benchmarks, pulling well ahead of that of its previous generation Ryzen 2000 chips and coming so close to that of the 9900K, it's really just a negligible difference. So when it comes down to it with the gaming benchmarks, this was pretty much a strenuous test. And I do emphasize this again, where we're extracting the biggest difference in these games based on CPU demand. And on that note, if you look at a lot of other titles, take for instance, Apex Legends, there'd be no difference between these CPUs. Furthermore, you've got the power efficiency there of the Ryzen 3000 chips, which is doing the best out of this stack. The Ryzen 7 3700X would easily be my pick for people who are even gonna couple this CPU with a 2080 Ti and wanna get the best FPS, but also save a lot more power compared to that of the 9900K. Granted, the 9900K will have a niche market still, and that is for competitive gamers who are playing for big money and they need the absolute most frame draw possible. But still, again, your road build up to those competitive gamers and matches, the Zen 2 is going to make sure you're not losing matches whatsoever. They're very good CPUs that are delivering so well in gaming, and that's due not just to the IPC increase, but also the latency reduction. AMD made a big note at their keynote earlier at CES, focusing on the latency drop of the Ryzen 3000 series. And pulling up some latency results in IDA64 for you guys, you can see that it does have improvements over that of the previous Ryzen 2000 series. And in some cases, it is beating the Intel chips too. It's also worth pointing out that the 3900X, although that did phenomenally well in today's benchmarks for gaming, 
it's going to be more suited to productivity where it didn't really score any extra over the 3700X. And the eight core 16 thread proposition is going to be very valid for years to come. Granted, we coupled this with a 2080 Ti, which is currently the best gaming GPU you can get for games. And on that note, we did, as we said before, focus on those CPU demanding titles. So out of this bunch of CPUs here, the Ryzen 7 3700X gets the big tech yes nod of approval. But let's move over now to the productivity benchmarks where the Ryzen 9 3900X really starts to spread its wings. And we see here with V-Ray, it's just coming well ahead of everything else. And the Ryzen 7 3700X is really coming close to the 9900K. And we're gonna keep in mind here that it's doing so whilst drawing a lot less power. And that's gonna be a consistent trend you're gonna see through another benchmark and all the other productivity benchmarks. But we'll pull up Cinebench R20 here, where again, the numbers are so close both on the single core thread score, as well as the multi-core threaded score. And then the Ryzen 9 3900X just pulls ahead of everything. And granted that costs a similar price to the 9900K. So you're getting much more bang for your buck with the new Ryzen 3000 chips than you are with the Intel chips for productivity. Moving over to Adobe Premiere Pro CC19, we can see here that the Ryzen 3900X is beating the 9900K, and then the 3700X is coming so close to that of the 9900K. Again, making it a phenomenal choice for people who want to edit 4K videos and get really good productivity for the dollar. The next benchmark we're gonna pull up here is 7-zip, both compression and decompression benchmarks, where the 3900X comes out on top, and then the 3700X is beating that of the 9900K. So it's doing a lot better here, especially in terms of value for money. And then moving over to Geekbench Multi 4, we can see here that the Intel does score the victory in the single core thread, but the 3700X does edge it out in the multi-core test. And then the 3900X is flying well ahead. And then pulling up the Corona 1.3 render benchmark, we see here again, the 3900X flying well ahead. And then the 3700X trading blows with the 9900K both overclocked and out of the box. And then the last benchmark for you guys in terms of productivity is the DaVinci Resolve 16, a different video editing software to Premiere Pro. 3900X comes out on top, 3700X trading blows with the 9900K, and then that summarizes the productivity benchmarks in a nutshell. But what we can see with the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 is that it's scoring very similar in both the productivity numbers and the gaming numbers to that of the overclocks that we managed to get here, but doing so with less power. So basically if you're an enthusiast, it's not a bad option to go out and get a good cooler or even use the Wraith Spire in the case of the 3700X and just enjoy your CPU and motherboard combo because it's going to give out phenomenal performance out of the box. And we can see that with the power consumption favoring that of PBO2. I didn't have any stability issues while I was here. Testing was a breeze too. So AMD have really hit the nail on the head with Zen 2. It's such an exciting time to be an enthusiast as we pointed out before. But with that said, let's go over some other details between these CPUs and give you guys the ultimate conclusion. So there it all is with the benchmarks. They do all the talking. Of course, I can advocate what I've seen here today, and that is just simply a new king is in town. It's so good to see that AMD have been working on their Ryzen chips and just constantly bettering them over the generations. I like the Ryzen 2000 chips over the 1000, and now I like the Ryzen 3000 chips a lot more than I like the 2000 over the 1000 series. They're delivered on just all fronts that an enthusiast would want, and AMD haven't left us in the lurch with no IPC gains or anything else for years, unlike what Intel have been doing with their CPUs since the sixth generation Skylake. So in a nutshell, Zen 2 is legit as being legit gets. AMD have just delivered and they've delivered so hard that it's such a breath of fresh air for enthusiasts like myself and I'm hoping most of you guys out there because this just means that we've got better value as consumers both buying new products and now of course with used products they're going to come down in accordance. And another good thing is, is the backwards compatibility. Granted, you will have to update the BIOS on your older motherboard, but you will be able to update, especially if you've got things like a B350 or an X370, you will be able to get the Ryzen 7 3700X, and at least with what I've seen with the testing here, have absolutely no problems. 
since these new 3000 chips are very power efficient, pulling less than that of the 2000 series when they're getting their sweet spot overclocks. So when it comes to Zen 2, I'm gonna pull up an old analogy that I once heard, a bit of a joke, but this time it's no joke, and that is when it comes to Zen 2, just buy it. It's phenomenal value for money, especially the 3700X. I think that's going to give everyone what they're looking for with that included Wraith Spire cooler, which does a great job. On the X570 boards too, I did some testing here, and it's really not coming that far behind at all compared to a 360 millimeter radiator, and you will be able to clock this on those X370 and B350 motherboards and get some great performance and especially value for money and also save a bit of power on the power bill compared to previous generation chips. When it comes to the 3900X, if you're looking for a productivity king, that's definitely gonna satisfy your needs, though there is the 16 core around the corner, so if you are waiting for an upgrade and you want a seriously big upgrade, then I'm guessing the 3950X is definitely going to be for you. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's review. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon where I've got a lot of different cool tests coming up with Zen 2, so make sure you stay subscribed, ring the bell if you wanna see these videos the moment they drop, and also let us know in the comments section below what do you think about the new king in town, AMD, with their Zen 2 architecture. I'm super excited as an enthusiast that's been longing for some real upgrades in the CPU department, and that's what AMD have delivered. Thank you, AMD, for giving enthusiasts what they want. It's a breath of fresh air, and it's good to see that the underdog is now back on top. It's the early millennia all over again, if you guys remember those days. But that aside, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.